In a state known for its scenic rivers, West Virginia's Greenbrier stands out. A popular destination for anglers, hikers, campers, and paddlers, at 162 miles from its headwaters in the mountains of Pocahontas County to its confluence with the New River just below Hinton, it's the state's longest free-flowing river. But back in the summer of 2007, the DEP began receiving complaints about large mats of filamentous algae forming in the river. We would see the water levels drop to, to where they are now, and within two or three weeks, we'd find ourselves in the midst of uh, long strings of algae, five, six feet long, and it pretty much made this part of the river, you know, unusable for uh, fishing and swimming. When we first started looking at the problem back in 2007 and 8, we had uh, 50 miles of river that were impaired. Uh, we had uh, below Caldwell, where Route 60 crosses the river from that point down toward Penn Springs was, which is about 25 to 30 miles of the river, I think, were generally 80 to 90 percent covered with uh, filamentous algae. When we first started working, even, it's not just a coating of algae, but a lot of the water column was full as well. So uh, in low water, the river was, many miles of it was unusable for recreation. People come here, we are a destination and they come here not only for the camping, but they come here to use the river. So there was some disappointment in the years past. People would show up, you know, they'd hike down, take a look at the river, small kids, they want to go fishing, it's not and, uh, swimming, it's 90 degrees, and uh, one glance at that river and they were right back up the hill to their rigs. So it really has made a, uh, it has made a definite uh, uh, effect. People would call in the past and ask about the river conditions, and if it was, uh, you know, if it was a little grungy, for lack of a better word, they would postpone their trip. So it's had a great effect on us. Scientists with the DEP's Watershed Assessment Branch determined the culprit was phosphorus, a key nutrient for the growth of algae. We did a multi-year study uh, beginning in 2008 uh, through 2010, and we did a lot of water quality sampling in the river itself. We floated the river to see where algae was growing, where it wasn't growing. We uh, did sampling of different sources, wastewater discharges, fish hatchery. Uh, we did storm event sampling from golf courses to, to evaluate the runoff coming from golf courses. And that all added up to about 85% of the phosphorus loading was coming from wastewater plants and municipal wastewater plants. But phosphorus loads alone couldn't be the sole source of the problem, since other streams with similar levels weren't suffering the same algal blooms. There had to be another factor, and finding it took some more detective work. Well, the Greenbrier River itself is like an ideal crucible for algae to grow in. It's a, a wide river, so there's not a lot of shade throughout the, the width of the river. It's a clear river uh, and shallow overall, so you get a lot of good sunlight penetration. So that fulfills the light need for the algae, and it has a rocky substrate. It's not, there's very little sediment in the river. And uh, so that rocky substrate gives a good surface for the algae to grow on. And then the chemistry of the river is also ideal. Uh, if you have not enough alkalinity or too much hardness, uh, the algae can't grow. And so the Greenbrier River's chemistry and physical characteristics are an ideal situation for algae to grow in. That led to the Greenbrier River Restoration Plan, a cooperative effort between the DEP, the towns of Alderson, Ronsford, and White Sulphur Springs, and the US EPA to improve water quality in the river. The plan set new lower limits on phosphorus discharge from wastewater treatment plants and a schedule for construction of upgrades necessary to meet the new permit standards. The project received $12 million in grant funding from the West Virginia Legislature. Basically, the, the wastewater plants were upgraded in a way that um, adds a level of treatment so the phosphorus is removed from the discharge. So it's, it's a chemical addition at the wastewater plant. Uh, the addition is aluminum, and uh, the aluminum will bind with the phosphorus and create a, a particulate uh, that will, can either settle out or be filtered out. So we bind aluminum with it and then filter it out, and you get a clean, much cleaner effluent. The upgrades were added over a four-year period with the final treatment to reduce phosphorus coming online in 2017. The difference was almost immediate. Essentially, as we turn the, the valve down on phosphorus that enters the river, we get a, a, a similar amount of reduction in the amount of algae growing. So we reduced, or rather the plant uh, 
upgrades were able to reduce the phosphorus discharge by 80 to 90 percent and so we've got a, a very similar reduction in the amount of algae growing in the river. I believe it was 2017 is when we first started noticing the difference and I don't know the history of the plant being treated after the flood but uh, it's improved because now we find this stretch of the river usable from our season from uh, April through October. The Greenbrier River Restoration Plan is now moving into phase two. We're going to try to fine-tune, work with the, uh, the municipalities to fine-tune the treatment processes in their new plants and uh, just to optimize treatment so that we get optimal removal and just get that last little bit of nuisance algae, try to get that taken care of. We do uh, annual monitoring on the river. We float the river to evaluate where algae is growing. We, we're still sampling the river. Uh, the permits for the wastewater treatment plants have permanent limits for phosphorus. They have permanent control measures in place. So the fact that there are permanent measures in place, permanent permit limits, and then we have at least a five-year program uh, moving ahead where we're still monitoring the river to make sure that things are looking okay. Are you optimistic as far as, uh, as the future goes for the river? Absolutely. It, yeah, the Greenbrier River, I think I call it a jewel. Uh, it is, uh, it's a beautiful river. It's, it's, it's a great place to come and just hang out with your family. It's very friendly uh, for families to come wade, swim, fish, and uh, it's just a beautiful place to come. And, and it's one of these, the things that I've done in 35 years working with DEP that you know that you're making a little bit of improvement in people's lives. The, the people that live here, the people that recreate here, just have a little bit better of quality of life now with, with the uh, changes that have been implemented. And to show just how effective and necessary this additional treatment is, an electrical problem at the Ronsford treatment plant recently damaged some equipment, taking the phosphorus removal treatment offline while repairs are made. The result? We're here at Rockland right now, which is, we're about three miles downriver from Ronsford. And this year, this summer, late in the summer, we've seen more bloom than we have in the last five years since the uh, upgrades have been implemented. Equipment breaks and, uh, and the town is working toward getting it fixed and, and that's the main thing. It's expected that once the problem at the treatment plant is repaired, the river should return to normal. In Greenbrier County, I'm Mike Huff for Environment Matters. Thanks for watching.